What are the keyword research strategies a SaaS business should implement to achieve long-term success? Today, you're going to learn exactly that. I'm Daniel LaFosso, CEO and founder of Digital Elevator, and we create videos that help you get better at SEO and marketing. Here's what we'll cover today. The types of SaaS keyword categories, keyword research around sales funnels, creating product and solutions pages steeped in keyword research, SaaS competitor keyword analysis, the type of SaaS pages to do keyword research around. Feel free to skip around any of these chapters to find the content that suits you. Your SaaS keyword research should identify a very fundamental yet very necessary categorization in order to capture search volume by user intent. Commercial, transactional, informational, and navigational. Note that some types of searches can overlap in categories, which is why we stress creating content for each of them. For example, someone may type in Walmart and want to find the nearest store just want to navigate to the website or shop online. Commercial keywords provide an indication of intent to learn more about your SaaS products. As such, these can be very valuable keywords to research and optimize your site for because they are often the step right before the transactional search. Commercial keywords support a query to learn more about a product and are indicative of a searcher who is likely to convert in the near future. Some examples of commercial keywords, free project management software, project management software features, Monday first base camp, Monday reviews. These keywords can be targeted with comparison articles, certain types of how-to articles, reviews, and best of posts. Transactional keywords are keywords with the strongest intent to purchase your product. These searchers have more or less decided they want a product very similar to yours and have their credit card in hand ready to purchase. Examples of transactional keywords include project management software prices, buy project management software. Informational keywords have little to no purchase intent and simply provide information. These types of keywords win in search volume but lose out in terms of helping with conversions. Examples of informational keywords include what is project management, who owns Basecamp. Navigational keywords are simply keywords used when someone wants to get to a specific destination. Examples of these include Monday customer service email, or Monday login. Performing the actual keyword research can be done with your favorite keyword research tool, but finding the intent of these keywords is generally a manual process. Our team uses Ahrefs for keyword research, but also likes the SEMrush keyword research tool because it actually provides an intent metric for you. While this tool can be very useful, I still recommend looking at the SERPs to make sure you're going after keyword intent properly. Take, for example, a search for project management software. This is one of those searches where you could argue intent for commercial, someone comparing PM softwares, informational, someone wanting to know the definition of project management software, or transactional, someone looking to purchase project management software. So what does the searcher want? Google tells us. As we can see from the SERPs and the prominence of best of results, Google places the intent of this search in the commercial category. What this exercise tells us is that if you want to rank for that search term, your best bet is to create a best of post so that you're creating content that matches what Google is looking for in terms of how they interpret intent. We've clearly identified four types of intent behind keywords for our SaaS. Now it's time to consider how these work in our SaaS sales funnel and how that relates to keyword research. When researching SaaS keywords, we wanna make sure our content team is provided with the relevant topics to cover the subtopics, which also have keyword volume, and how they can create content for all stages of the funnel. Why is this important? Creating content for the top, middle, and bottom of the sales funnel will allow you to attract, convert, and move prospects along your sales funnel no matter what stage they enter. If we consider the top of the funnel more of a brand awareness stage, the middle of the funnel a consideration stage, and the bottom of the funnel the final research stage, we are covering all of our bases and giving our SaaS products the best chance to continually drive leads, demos, trials, or signups. Let's use the company Unbounce as an example to see how they cover the different types of keywords for different stages of their sales funnel. As mentioned, top of the funnel keywords and the topics that are centered around them have a lot to do with brand awareness. They are related to brand awareness because these topics generally have a lot of search volume. Because they are not commercial or transactional in nature, they can be considered top of the funnel in terms of building trust with the prospect who finds your content and learns about your brand for the very first time. Using Unbounce as an example, some good examples of the top of the funnel keywords they are ranking for are 
What is a landing page? 16,000 searches a month. Landing page design, 1,300 searches a month. Landing page best practices, 450 searches a month. These searches have nothing to do with Unbounce itself and are not related to making a purchase or comparing software. And these users are very unlikely to make a purchase when landing on the Unbounce website. The value of these keywords, however, is that they speak to the exact type of audience that Unbounce wants to attract. Someone who wants to know what landing pages are for, how to design a landing page, or the best practices for using landing pages in their marketing. Often, SaaS brands who rank for top of the funnel content will use blogs to rank for these types of searches. Reverse engineering, nearly any popular SaaS website will reveal top of the funnel content as a top generating traffic resource. This does not mean that this should be the sole focus of your, of your efforts. As mentioned, traffic from top of the funnel tends to be highest in volume, but the lowest in conversions. But as any SaaS in any competitive space understands, top of the funnel content can give you a seat at the table when the prospects begin to move down the sales funnel because at least they will begin to associate your brand with the products you provide. Middle of the funnel content for SaaS can prove to be some of its most important in terms of the sales funnel. These searchers are aware that there are software solutions for the problems that they have, but they haven't yet narrowed down their searches to any specific brands and may still be a few days, weeks, or even months out from doing so. For Unbounce, middle of the funnel keywords they rank for include landing page builder, 1600 searches a month, landing page template, 450 searches a month, and real estate landing pages, 200 searches a month. These searchers are much closer to our commercial keyword category we previously discussed, and where the searchers are discovering the different types of options they have should they want to purchase a software that meets their needs. You'll often find that product or solution pages rank for these types of terms, more on that a little bit later, and that understanding where your customer's needs are will best position you to craft content to rank for many different types of middle of the funnel keywords. Bottom of the funnel keywords for SaaS companies are related to interest, desire, and action. These people know there are solutions out there that meet their needs and they are narrowing down their decision before they inevitably make a purchase. They already know who you are and will be making transactional searches to inform their final decision. For Unbounce, this means keywords such as Unbounce landing page templates, 100 searches a month, Unbounce free trial, 50 searches a month, Unbounce A-B testing, 40 searches a month. This may be your final chance to convince your prospects why your product is the best fit for them or has the most features for the money. Bottom of the funnel content can take the form of several different types of content. For example, Unbounce has case studies that may help push users over the edge. They also have free white papers that have content geared at using their product for some end result rather than just for lead generation. Other brands use webinars, review pages, or product update pages for extra value ads based on the perceived needs of their buyers. So if you were to ask me, where should I start with this keyword research? I would say with your money making pages, which should be foundational in any SaaS website design and keyword research strategy. These are your product and solution pages. Keyword research doesn't need to drive your product and solution pages, but it can. What I mean by that can be best explained in an example. Take the Unbounce.com site, starting with a look at the drop-down menu under Products. Let's dissect the templates as well as the pop-ups and sticky bars pages in terms of keyword rankings for some examples. We can tell by looking at the title tag and heading of the landing page templates page that they have clearly optimized the page for landing page templates. The title tag is 100 plus high converting landing page templates, the bar and unbounce, and the heading is choose from over 100 high converting landing page templates. In the rankings of this page with the branded searches removed, we can see that the page is very well for queries related to landing page templates, and in fact, ranks number one for this very competitive search. There is also a dedicated page for pop-ups and sticky bars, which unbounce does not dominate as well as for keywords as their landing page template page, but shows a concerted effort to do so based on the keyword targeting. Like the landing page template title tag, we see the use of the target keyword here as well. Pop-up builder, pipe, sticky bar builder, pipe, unbounce. But we don't see it used in the heading, which is convert better on any page of your website. However, we can see some rankings for this page, albeit probably not aligned with what unbounce would like to see. Regardless, the point here is that there are separate product pages for each of their respective products, and it seems that 
on Bounce has taken the time to optimize these pages based on the target keywords they have researched. In a different example, this time on the solutions page, we can also see that Unbounce has potentially used keyword research to drive their solutions pages or perhaps just wanted to create a page that resonated with their users. If you can do both, that's the best of both worlds and why we try to recommend it to our clients when we create the solution pages for them. But back to the example for Unbounce's solution page for the email marketing use case. This page, in addition to being a value add for potential visitors who may want to know if this solution works for email marketing, also has some SEO value. As we can see, email marketing landing pages and related searches have volume. Here's a bonus tip. We can see potential keyword value in the market by looking at the CPC metric or cost per click metric. As seen in this screenshot, landing page email marketing has a CPC of $42.33, showing high transactional value and something worthy of ranking for organically. Keyword research around product and solutions is a very personal and subjective type of research as it relates exclusively to your products and services. However, it is very likely that you have several competitors who have similar products that will be competing for the same keywords. So while you may only do a little competitive research when doing keyword research for the products related to your SaaS, you'll definitely want to target and reverse engineer your competitor's best performing keywords to get an understanding of where they're driving traffic and potentially leads for all of their types of content. This type of keyword research is called a keyword content gap analysis and can be done with a tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush. We like to use Ahrefs. Using the Ahrefs content gap tool, we can gain insight into the keywords our competitors rank for and then make decisions on whether we want to create content to compete with these rankings. You may already know who your competitors are. If not, you can perform a quick search around a target solution to see who ranks and enter them into the tool. Let's continue with our unbounce example and look for landing page software. On the first page of the SERPs, we see brands, lead pages, Insta page, and some roundup posts that mention brands like ClickFunnels and Wishbomb. So we're gonna throw those into our tool. Right off the bat, one of the keywords I see a competitor ranking for is what is AMP. This keyword alone ranks for 11,000 searches per month. There are also some other keywords that may lend themselves to landing page creation or some sort of problem where landing page may be part of a solution, which would be great for Unbounce. These include remarketing, funnels, and cross-selling. Naturally, you want to do a bit more research to determine the intent of these searches in the SERPs, how competitive they are, how much value they would have for your brand, and if your software solution makes logical sense in relation to the topic. The above is just a small example of the additional 6,686 keywords that Unbounce does not rank for. They could theoretically continue the above process over and over and review each topic to determine viability. Another option to look at a competitor keyword is to reverse engineer competitor sites on a case-by-case -case basis. Let's take instapage.com since it seems to be ranking for a lot of keywords that unbounce.com does not. So we'll put the site in the Ahrefs Site Explorer tool and check out the top pages. Now we can sort through the top pages of Instapage to see the keywords they rank for along with other data such as volume of primary keyword, the estimated amount of traffic, the amount of keywords a page ranks for in total, and the value if you were to pay for the keywords in Google Ads. Another way to look into competitor keyword research is to use a different tool inside Ahrefs. On the same sidebar of the Site Explorer is a section called Top Pages under the legacy section. This is my personal favorite way to reverse engineer competitors because it allows you to expand on all the keywords a URL ranks for without leaving the page. Here, you'll see the same URLs as the above top pages data, except with a keywords dropdown that you can expand upon. I personally like this because it gives me an idea of the volume of some of the secondary keywords and their potential. At Digital Elevator, we don't select keywords in isolation. We select topics and research the possibility of ranking for hundreds or even thousands of keywords for one page. As you can see in the above screenshot, this AMP post for Instapage ranks for over 550 keywords, while the primary keyword of what is AMP, 11,000 searches per month, is very desirable the other 553 keywords are attractive as well. Anyhow, from a quick glance, you can see that there are multiple types of keywords and content types that you can glean from a competitive analysis. 
From here, it is up to the SEO team to determine which pages will have the most business impact and evaluate other SEO factors such as keyword difficulty, backlinks, content depth and quality, and other important factors that may influence rankings. It is likely that the majority of your SaaS keyword research will reveal keywords that are good for your product and solution pages, as well as your blog. However, your keyword research shouldn't stop there, and trying to be intentional about the content you create around keywords can provide your site that extra little push it needs to generate more attention. Here are the areas you should focus on. Product pages, which we explained earlier. These are the money-making pages that serve the bottom of the funnel searchers who are exploring all the things your software can do. This is your page to brag about yourself and infuse potential keywords into the mix that match search intent with purchase intent. These keywords have commercial or transactional intent and should include keywords such as software, tool, platform, solution, etc. Solutions pages generally serve a more specific audience and are popular for helping searchers understand and answer, is this software for me? For example, Qualtrics has an entire solutions section dedicated to industries and roles. The Qualtrics education solution page ranks for Qualtrics for students with 40 searches a month, as well as educational survey, which also has 40 searches a month. In this capacity, the page serves for both branded and generic searches. Features pages are often subsets of the actual SaaS solution, but help explain important ways the software works to aid in the site's UX. When possible, it is recommended that these pages also be created with keyword research in mind. For example, Keep's feature page on their CRM ranks for a slew of commercial and middle of the funnel keywords. The integration capabilities of a SaaS are often a major consideration for consumers when finalizing their options. In addition to creating a standalone integration page, it is also advantageous to do keyword research on your integration partner's keywords. For example, Lead Pages has searches dedicated to the types of integrations they support. Pricing pages generally serve branded searches and should be fairly straightforward to rank for. However, pricing page keyword research may reveal some untapped FAQ opportunities in which to ensure the traffic goes to your site versus a com competitor or roundup post. For example, the term CRM price gets 450 searches a month and may make for a keyword we're targeting on a CRM pricing page. Versus pages are a common SaaS tactic that can be prioritized in terms of business value. These are often funneled with direct branded search comparisons. For example, Clearbit has gone directly after the competitor data.com with this page. Based on some of the related searches, it looks like a win. Another bottom of the funnel search is brand and then review. Rather than losing clicks to software review sites like G2 or Captera, try to earn some of this traffic with a review page of your own. For case studies, I've come across generic industry case study or industry success stories types pages with keyword volume. Check out these keywords from Keeps case study page. What other types of pages can you do keyword research for? Let me know in the comments below. So let's go through some takeaways. Keyword research is just one piece of the puzzle for SaaS SEO. Conducting your research, don't put all the weight on keyword volume alone. Consider the journey of the user, how to create content around each stage of their research, and how your research can combine with business initiatives to stay focused on the areas where you can get quick wins. Thanks for tuning in.